Hi everyone, I hope you're well. I'm Kisanara, the editor of chieflittlecareers.com. Um, I'm also a career coach and prior to that I was a lawyer. I trained at a magic circle firm called Link Motors. I'm delighted to say that I've been joined by one of Cheeky Little Careers Associate Executive Coaches, Matt Verrill. And in this short video, we're going to talk about managing the internal qualification process for trainees who are due to finish their um, training contracts later this year. Matt, why don't you introduce yourself and say a few words about yourself first? Yeah, thanks, Asnara, and hi, everyone. Good to be with you today. Um, as Asnara said, I'm, I'm an Associate Executive Coach with CheekyLittleCareers.com. And uh, my legal background is I was uh, similar to Snara at a magic circle firm, but I was at uh, Allen and Overy um, before moving to Flatgate. So um, hopefully today we will share some, some good tips on thinking about your route to qualification. So how was qualification for you? Was it a stressful time or were you feeling quite confident? It was quite stressful because I was sitting in the firm's Moscow office at the time, trying to do everything remotely through London. Um, and I didn't have any family or friends around either. So for me, it was a lot of a uh, lot of toing and froing, and we didn't quite have Zoom back in those days. But uh, it was everything was sort of had to be done virtually. Um, how about yourself? How did you find it? Back in the day when I qualified, the process was pretty informal. It was really just having a quick coffee with the heads of department. I knew quite early on that I wanted to qualify into corporate, and had done a double seat, so I was already in position of strength and the economy was in a much better state than it is at the moment. So I was feeling quite confident. That said, the corporate team I wanted to qualify into was super competitive to get into because it had all the really popular partners like uh, Charlie Jacobs, who up until recently was um, the senior partner at, uh, at Link Motors and he was you know, a great guy to work for and everyone wanted to be in his team. So although quite a confidence, still a little bit on edge as to how it was going to pan out. Uh, so how did you manage your process uh, internally? What, what was involved and how did you prepare yourself, firstly psychologically for all of this? Yeah, so we, we had, um, I think similar to you, it, it was relatively informal. Um, we were told that, you know, obviously we had to keep impressing um, people in the various departments that we wanted to ultimately qualify into. But it was quite an informal process. I think I filled out a form with my, my first choice, second choice, my first choice being leverage finance because I had done a seat in that in my second seat and sure. then I'd done it a little bit in my final seat too. Um, and psychologically, I knew there was a bit of a going to be a bit of a jump because suddenly this safety net of being a trainee seemed to disappear. And that was a bit of a shock. Did you find that as well? I was worried because I was thinking, whoa, I'm never going to be able to say I'm just a trainee, never go and ask someone else sort of thing. But back to the qualification process, I know we've both described that our processes were relatively slick and far more informal than they are these days. I know from the work I do supporting trainees on my outplacement program that it's pretty rigorous now, which I think is right because it makes it fairer. So it's no longer about who's the most popular and you know the, who's the loudest trainee in the group who seems to get noticed more. It, the typical process will involve putting down your choices of seats which lots of trainees have probably already started doing and then there'll be an internal interview some partners will also expect trainees to complete a written exercise or other form of assessment uh, for me the top tip i would give you is firstly you need to make your choices quite clear to the relevant influential senior people in the teams that you want to join that's probably my biggest lesson about being a junior lawyer or a trainee in a law firm, having that visibility. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's a great point. I just add to that and say that I think my top tip would be um, notice or recognise that the work that you're doing as a trainee will be different to the work you do as an NQ. So you need to make sure you're talking to current NQs in that department you're interested in qualifying into to see what day to day life as a new qualified lawyer is like, yeah, because you need to point. satisfy yourself that you're going to enjoy the work. Um, a little pitfall that I fell into was that I based my qualification preference, it was entirely on the people. I enjoyed working with the people. Now, the problem with that is people tend to leave. So suddenly I found myself in a department where I didn't actually know that many people. All the people I liked 
as a trainee had left. And I wasn't that keen on the work either. Um, so if I was to have my time again, I would make sure that I knew what the day-to-day -day ins and outs for the job involved as an NQ. Such a brilliant point. And I certainly see this quite a lot with the trainees I speak to, that choices are based on personalities, the people and experiences of being a trainee, which doesn't necessarily reflect what your workload is going to be like once you gain more years of experience. So your point about speaking to NQs, I'd even say talk to more senior people, just to get a feel for what your day-to-day -day responsibilities will be like at longer term. I think for me, the work is the most important piece, but that needs to also be tied into your medium and longer term plans because some practice areas are better suited to uh, potentially moving in house or to relocate to outside of London, for example. You know, I think if you qualified into derivatives and structured finance, that's going to be more challenging if you want to end up moving to the countryside at some point in the future where so practice areas like mainstream corporate employment um, property are probably better suited for a relocation with regard to in-house again depending on what sectors you're interested in then that should be an influencing factor as well because for example if you don't want to work ever in the financial services sector then qualifying into banking or even corporate arguably is something you should think quite carefully about any other thoughts or observations matt um, no, I, I agree with what you said there. And sometimes it's difficult, isn't it, to know what your longer term goals might be, certainly in your sort of personal life and where you want to end up working. But know that it's all right if you don't have the answer right now. Um, you will find a way or you're, you're kind of the path will will start to unfold as you get more experience. Yes. Um, for me, uh, it kind of follows on from that as well. And thinking about your your professional development, your personal development, too, it's never too soon to start developing you. As a person, yes, you'll have the technical expertise that you'll be developing and you'll be very conscious that you want to um, get very sort of efficient in the, the law, as it were. Yeah. But think about you as a person. How are you going to develop yourself to make sure that you are this sort of well-rounded individual who can ultimately, you know, you can progress in your career, whether it's in law or whether it's something else. But starting from day one, hit the ground running. Um, it could be books that you could be reading around. Um, your subject or around simply there are so many personal development books out there at the moment aren't there i mean i've got two two book bookshelves full of them um i'm sure you've got a few hasnar as well mm. yeah i do just going back to qualification choices the reason i wanted to stress the importance of thinking longer term and what you want to be doing when you're so let's say a mid-level associate is that it's not so easy to chop and change practice areas once you've qualified. Similarly, if you do decide to go in-house as an NQ, you need to make sure that that's absolutely the right thing that you want to be doing longer term because it's quite difficult to then switch back into private practice. The legal sector is notorious for favouring candidates who have quite straight line vanilla CVs. So if you do go off in a tangent, then for me, that's pretty sort of risky. Similarly, uh, trainees often ask me, should I take some time out between qualification and getting an NQ job in the event that they don't get something internally? Uh, that's obviously, I'm obviously not talking about quality leave here. And my advice is no, because all you're doing is kicking the can into the long grass, because what you'll be doing is approaching six months PQE, but having had no post qualified experience, which will inevitably put you at a disadvantage when compared to the next batch of trainees that will be coming up for qualification in spring 2022. Uh, yeah. Matt, did you want to make any closing remarks? Um, I think really it, it's, it's a time when you get to focus on yourself and think about what's important to you. It's that golden question, is it, what sort of lawyer do I want to be? Very good um, point. So really dedicate some time to try and answer that question. Speak to people in your network really make use of those contacts and explore your options so that you can make as best informed decision for you as possible i would say brilliant okay thanks very much matt it's really good to catch up with you do you look out for you. our next video which it will be 
discussing the external and key jobs market. Um, until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.